Hello and welcome to the SciShow talk show, the part of SciShow where we talk to cool people about cool things. Now we have previously had on the show quite a lot, Jesse from Animal Wonders, and people have asked over and over again, how did you get to be doing something so cool? So today, instead of just bringing us an animal, she's bringing herself and her husband, Augusto, <laughs> to talk about Animal Wonders, how you guys got into this, and uh, what your life is like as keepers of all of these wonderful beasts. Crazy animals, yeah. crazy critters. First, why did you want to do this? And, and what exactly did you want to do? Because maybe it wasn't exactly this. And, uh, and how did you get into it? Well, why I did it is because I'm crazy about animals. Um, and uh, I originally wanted to shoot I thought I wanted to be a filmmaker and go out into Africa and shoot you know, lion prides and, and get the whole natural behavior of animals on camera. Um, and then it kind of went more into, well, I wanted to do more education and hands-on with the animals. Uh, it's, I wanted to be an elephant keeper. Mm. Um, when I first started my animal training school, and then it kind of morphed into this educational outreach where I would rescue animals and uh, do education there. So you did go to school for this? We did, yeah. We yeah. did? So you both did? Yep. Two-year program. Is that how you guys met each other? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so where is that program? It's in Moore Park, California. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, about a half hour north of Los Angeles. Um, and uh, it's called America's Teaching Zoo. Or we call it EDOM, Exotic Animal Training and Management Program. So it's a two-year program that you have to apply for and only about 50 students get in per year. Wow. So, yeah, it's a hard so one to get into. He was my second year, first and second year, so he was my wow. second year, and he was training a, a baboon named Rosie, and uh, I found it very interesting. Her behavior <laughs> was really interesting, and so... Um, and so was his. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh -huh. so romantic. Oh, so he, uh, he wooed me with his baboon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and so what did you want to do when you wanted to? Got into it. Started? Yeah. yeah. Well, we, you know, I always liked animals, but I guess I was always interested in like cryptozoology and discovering new mm -hmm. spe specimen species out there. So that was always interesting, and so I decided, you know, to pursue that kind of animal field and uh, particularly primates. I enjoy learning about primates. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have one now, Animal Wonders, but you know, never know about the future. Yeah. But yeah, so I worked with a baboon at uh, the zoo, the teaching zoo. Um, also worked with um, squirrel monkeys at the outreach that I worked at after I graduated at the zoo. There was these two squirrel monkeys, and we did a lot of uh, inner city school presentations, which awesome. for me was uh, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. You know, going into these inner cities and kids don't even have the chance to go to the zoo sometimes and see some of these animals and so I had the chance to let them see it up close and uh, one time there was a little boy afterwards after the show he came up to me and he said he wanted to be like me when he when, when he grew up so it was uh that was very special for me so That's that was awesome. the most rewarding part of it all so, great yeah how did you end up in Missoula or outside of Missoula with your own with your own business your own well we were going to the program and um, well, at the program, you get three degrees. Uh, you get, um, I guess that's not answering your question. No, that's, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, you get three degrees. You get um, animal behavior degree, you get wildlife education degree, and you get exotic animal management degree. Um, two years, three degrees. Yeah, 22 months. That was months. an extraordinary value. Yeah, yeah. I, I took me four to get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I took two years of film school and got nothing, and I took two years of animal <laughs> school and got, you know, whole life change. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, it's animal boot camp there. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not like normal college. It's, you're on call 24-7. It's intense. You're working, you know, all the time. Um, and you're learning, you're learning just so much stuff in, mm -hmm. this, in a short amount of time. And I bet you smell great. Oh, awesome. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> you start not knowing when you're at the zoo and when you're at home. It's not the same. <laughs> um, so why did we end up in Missoula? Um, well, we had a couple choices. You know, Augusto and I decided that we wanted to pursue this together. And uh, we had a couple choices of where we could move. And it was either his uh, home country of Peru, mm -hmm. which I don't speak Spanish very well. Um, Yet. 
Mm. I could learn. I know, I know. <laughs> I've been trying for like eight years. <laughs> um, or we could stay in Southern California where there's a lot of, I guess, competition, but there's just a lot of, of the organizations like that down there. Mm -hmm. Or we could come to my hometown of Montana, Missoula, Montana, where there is just, it's unheard of. Right. No one had done this before. And mm -hmm. we could get into rural schools and do um, expand Montana's you know, knowledge of the next, genera next generation's knowledge. Um, that's awesome. And, and so that's, we, we made the choice to come here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So what do you guys do at your, at your facility, at Animal Wonders? We do a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> Clean up after all the animals. <laughs> Cleaning up. That's, yeah. a, that's a, the I majority guess that's of what, what you do. Yeah. Cleaning up. Um, <laughs> and feeding. And well, the animals that we get in, we, we rescue 90, over 90 percent of our animals. Um, and we like to use the word displaced because these animals came from different places. They, uh, they were people's pets that just got in over their head. They were abused, neglected. Some were illegally owned. Some were donated from different zoos. They didn't have space or they just had surplus animals. Um, so the animals we get in, they're just so varied. We have over mm -hmm. 50 species of animals. And we have over 75 animals themselves, but 50 species. We have to research mm -hmm. every single diet to make sure each of them has the very sp special diet that they need. Um, Augusta does a lot of research in that. Um, and then we have to assess their behavior. When they come in, a lot of them are, are traumatized um, for whatever reason. And we have to assess their behavior and try and rehabilitate their behavior um, and get, to them point, get them to a point where they can be out in public and have a, you know 100 eyes staring at mm -hmm. them or be under lights you know, in front of a camera. Um, so they're not, a lot of these guys were people's pets, but we don't call them pets. Yeah, I mean, how does that, how does that, like, you must get really attached to the animals and, and start to have a relationship that feels kind of like that relationship, but they're wild, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when, that's what I explain to everybody when we do our, our presentations is you have to have this respect for these animals. Because once you kind of lose it and you, you know, think of them as, you know, your little dog and that's when bad things can happen. So, and you have to always remember that they're, they're wild animals. Mm -hmm. So what's the most dangerous animal you have? I imagine you haven't brought it onto our show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see, I would say our most dangerous is probably our seven foot boa constrictor, okay. red tailed boa. Um, that's just that because- That can hit with pretty significant force. Yeah, she would bruise you if she tried to strike at you. Um, you could get her off of you. It'd be most dangerous for you know a, a frail person, an elderly or a child sleeping maybe. Um, <laughs> but we have brought probably our most dangerous animal on already. We did? Mr. Fluffy, the huge, huge the fluff ball. The Arctic fox. Oh. Cass. Okay. Um, he, uh, He's got quite the attitude. Yeah. Um, I don't, he does really well. We work really hard to maintain that their their behavior on stage, I guess mm -hmm. you would say, in front of the public. We handle them in very specific ways to make them nice and calm. Um, but yeah, don't can't treat a fox like a pet. <laughs> not an Arctic fox. They yeah. uh, they uh, require a lot of respect. Not not uh, a lap fox. No, <laughs> can't just stroke the fluffiness. <laughs> But uh, we don't have a lot of really dangerous animals like mm -hmm. bears and lions and, and primates are, can be another dangerous one. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we want to make sure that the animal is, is taken care of and, and we're not going to bring it out if it's going to be dangerous to the public. Right. Oh. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, you, so you said you've got animals that are illegal to, like you got them because they were illegally owned. Yeah. How are you legally able to own them? We have three different permits. We have a federal permit, USDA um, Class C exhibitor's license, and we have a state permit um, with Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Um, and then we also have a U.S. Wildlife Service, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, um, mm -hmm. that allows us to keep our hawk as well. Okay. So you have to apply for these. These guys come and, and regulate the facility, make sure we're taking care of the animals properly, make sure we have proper cages, make sure we have um, protect the environment, the natural environment around us. So we have to make sure that we're following all those laws. And we al you also have to have a certain um, hundreds of numbers of hours of experience right. with animals before you can get them. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So there's different regulations for different animals. There is, yeah. 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 Some you can touch, some you can't. Yes, I learned that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch. <laughs> I think we cut those parts out. <laughs> but, but, but. I want to, yeah. 
Well, uh, obviously, since we have you here, we should also get some hands-on with an animal. An animal? Hi, what do you have for us today? We have a really, really neat lizard. Okay. We can go get him. Who do we have with us today? This is Argos the Euromastix. More specifically, the Molly Euromastix. That is a strange name. What, where did that name come from? Euro Euromastix? Yeah. It's uh, part of its scientific name, and it's one of those that scientific names carry it over to the common name. Okay. It's a neat, funny, funny name. And you can see it's Molly Euromastix by the, the pattern on its back. They'll have different patterns in the different species. Would you like to hold him? Sure. If it's safe. He's pretty oh, good. Here. He does. Get your fingers mm -hmm. behind his armpits there. Okay. The there you go. Hi, you're freezing. <laughs> he's cold, so he's going to be ectothermic. Yeah. <laughs> so the same temperature as the air around you. Where are you going? So right. whatever temperature is right now, what's it, like 70 degrees yeah. or whatever? He's 70 degrees, so it feels so much that the air doesn't feel cool, but he feels cool. He's doing the chicken thing. Is he moving his head to say <laughs> the chicken thing? <laughs> <laughs> Keeping his eyes. Yeah. Gotta keep it in all Maybe steady. I shouldn't let you handle animals for now. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. He's doing good. He'll let you know if he's upset. He'll open his mouth and he'll gape. Quite like, good. I'm ready to bite you. <laughs> I'm yeah. big and scary and mm -hmm. yes, I will okay. get you. But these guys are really neat. Um, the, the biggest defense they have is that awesome tail they have yeah, back there. Big. It's like this really cool club thing that they use. So if they get scared by something, they're going to run as fast as they can into a crevice of a rock or some structure like that, then trying to get into this tiny little space where they can't get to their body, they'll mm -hmm. leave their tail out. So if the thing, the predator, tries ah, to eat wow. it, they'll just whack it back and forth as yeah, hard as they powerful. can. He has lots of muscles. That's, that's a lot of muscle in that tail. That felt like human strength. Mm -hmm. and you're very small. <laughs> Not, no offense. You are. You're small. I mean, you're big for a lizard. I don't, I don't want to offend. <laughs> Can start gaping at you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those specialized scales back there that are just very hard and, and right, bony. They're scrapey. not spiky, but Yeah, but like, hard. I, could, I wouldn't want to get hit by that. Yeah. That Do you cool. overfeed Argos, or is this a normal body <laughs> shape? <laughs> 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 <Is> he's fluffy. <laughs> he's inflated right now. Oh, okay. He's just trying to yeah. be big, and also that's how they wedge themselves into a rocky crevice. Oh, They'll go in there and inflate themselves. And they can't yeah. Get out. yeah, and then it makes it hard for them to yeah be pulled out. And then their tail's a little part that's sticking out. So a whacked predator. So where did Argos come from to you guys? Oh, jeez. So we were talking about how we get these displaced animals. Um, mm -hmm. We get some really strange calls and, uh, and emails. Just um, This guy, we got a call from a, a teacher, uh, and uh, she was kind of panicking on the phone. And she was saying, another teacher had this gray lizard and she was pregnant, and they all thought that she was going to go into premature labor because there was mice in the tank. And I couldn't really figure out what was going on. <laughs> um, That's, so I, said, I mean, <laughs> I, I always give birth whenever I see mice. I really? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so we said, OK, OK. Um, we don't know what kind of lizard it is, but it, it definitely sounds like we need to. Mm -hmm. get this poor guy out of that situation and help the poor pregnant lady. So we drove up there uh, a couple hours and uh, went to pick him up. I was thinking, you know, beard or dragon, something common, and mm -hmm. it turned out to be a Euromastix, which aren't as common. And there were mice in the cage. Um, it was a tank, and there was three mice in there, and I don't know how they got in. So they weren't food mice. They weren't no, like pinkies or something. this little guy's uh, like mostly vegetarian. Oh, okay. So Ooh, sorry. I don't know why they... They had mice in there. Maybe he was eating. He was being fed an improper diet as well. He was being fed just all bird seed. Mm. Um, so maybe they were munching on the seeds in there. But we, we rescued him and brought weird. him home. And but it was in a school. It was mm -hmm. in a school of someone, a teacher's pet. Mm -hmm. Redefines teacher's pet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we brought him back. And these guys, uh, they, they're not starter pets. Um, they're not starter lizards for people. They're not for beginners. They require a specialized diet. They need. Um, fresh greens and vegetables, a little bit of fruit, and then there's, they do eat seeds in the wild as well. But the most important thing that these guys need is the proper heat. They need to get up to 120 degrees, which is really hot. So they need this really hot spot light. Um, mm. They need that so they can digest their food. 
Mm. If they're not getting 120 degrees, they can't digest and they'll get very sick. And that was one of the cool things I learned uh, in, in undergrad is that there are lots of different enzymes that work at lots of different temperature ranges. And yeah. if you don't, if you're not in that temperature range, it just doesn't work. Yep, <laughs> you're out of luck. Yeah. <laughs> So, and this guy's also really interesting because he doesn't drink water. Oh. He doesn't drink so water. So you're a desert animal then? Desert mm -hmm. animal. Um, gets all of his uh, liquids that he needs from his food. Le lettuce is just mostly water. Yeah, That's where I, I don't drink either. Just <laughs> lettuce. Just lettuce. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a lie. I saw you drinking water. I'm very thirsty. <laughs> I may die. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Argos, come here, buddy. That's more comfortable. There you go. You know her. She's nice. It doesn't move. Like he will not let you move it in a direction you don't want to move it in. He's holding it. <laughs> Argos, thank you very much for joining us on the SciShow Talk Show. And Jesse and Augusto, this, it's been such a pleasure. I'm so glad that you're here in Montana to uh, bring us all of these amazing animals and thank you so much for deciding to do that. Well, thank you. I feel really lucky that I get to do it and that I get to come on your show. Yeah, It's great for SciShow, obviously, but it's also great for the community here. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching this episode of the SciShow Talk Show. Thanks to Jesse and Augusto. And if you want to keep getting smarter with us here at SciShow, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe.